300 blackout. All right, everybody, welcome back to the bench. Um, today, I wanted to show you guys uh, my process on converting 556-223 brass uh, over into 300 blackout brass, so you can load your own 300 blackout. I load uh, subsonics um, pretty cheap this way. I don't know if it's any cheaper than buying subsonics, but I like to think it is. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into this. Before we get into doing it, I just want to kind of go over some of the things that you're going to want. Uh, need or you know high, highly suggestible items to have on hand the first of which uh, well Get you some brass um, I Just get my brass from the local range they sell it in bulk there and you know just a bunch of mixed head stamp range brass They're kind enough to sort it out into two two three five five six though so I just bought a five gallon bucket of that for like a hundred dollars and which I feel is a pretty good deal on that much brass, but holy crap, my wrist hurts from depriming all these things. Okay, so you're gonna want some brass. Um, you're gonna want a 300 blackout reloading die set. I got uh, mine uh, is on the press currently. I got a turret press with some lead eyes in it. Uh, you're gonna want to get yourself a Harbor Crate, Harbor Frig. A little bench top grinder or bench top bench top cutoff saw. That's the actual name on it. Two inch bench top cutoff saw. Um, and it's I just left the blade on it. I think these are 35 bucks at Harbor Freight. I just left the blade that came on it on it because this thing absolutely rips. Uh, and down in the little vise that it comes with, I got a specific made uh, jig for holding casings uh, to cut them to the right length to turn them into 300 blackout brass um, that's about fifteen dollars thirty five dollars whatever two two three brass you got laying around um, the dies press powder bullets obviously all that stuff another thing that I want to mention too is I got this Frankfurt Arsenal uh, pocket swager and uh, I don't think this is uh, absolutely necessary I think you could get away without doing this but I like doing it because a lot of the range brass you know is five five six head stamp or you know they're crimped or uh, you know crimped or uh, staked primers in them and this guy just you know takes care of you know opens that pocket primer pocket back up but you could probably get away with reaming those with a primer pocket reamer or you know something to that effect but if, I don't think this is too bad on the pocketbook so I picked this guy up for pretty cheap anyways I think that about does it on the items you're gonna need. Let's go ahead and get started here, huh? So the first step uh, is really boring, um, but it is uh, cleaning and uh, sorting your brass, and uh, and it sucks. But there are head stamps. I found a, I, I've been using a list that I found online uh, to sort the uh, head stamp on the back of the brass for what's good for 300 blackout and what's you know not as good less desirable I'm sure you could make it work but I've just been following this guy just because you know screw it I got plenty of brass to choose from so I'll pick the head stamps uh, on this list because uh, you know somebody already did the math for me and it's all about the case wall thickness and all that stuff so I'll go ahead and throw that guy up here right in here for sorting and I'll put a link in the description um, where to find it uh, if you're interested in looking at that but I use that so I sorted all these by head stamp and while I was doing that I had a uh, hand D primer I got this I got this I got this dude here ran it all night last night watching TV um, till my hand got tired <laughs> but I, I did pretty good and this is all the brass that I found that was good for converting to 300 and all the stuff that it isn't good or you know that has a bad head stamp uh, I throw it in a different bucket and that'll just be 223 uh, 556 reloading brass so you know bang and buck there I guess there's some sig brass that I found so I guess uh, we're gonna see if this is good stuff I think it'll be fine 
pretty cool though to have nickel plated casings. Anyway, so first step, sort all your brass head stamp. I deprime it just because I don't like. Uh, I, I think there's a, there's a method to this madness, and I can't quite remember, but I know that depriming it right now versus on the press is a little better option for for me at least. Um, that's up to you though. I I oh yeah no I did I did it's because the pocket swaging. Haha, <laughs> that's why you deprime it so you can swage the pockets. So I just do that when I'm sorting it. I deprime it so that way I can go through the next step, which is pocket swaging all the brass, you know, uh, and getting the pockets opened up. And then we'll move on to cutting them. Figured I'd show you guys, you know, the pocket swaging process. Uh, a lot of this is Lake City brass, and like this, I can't. I'm not really sure. It kind of looks like it's been crimped, but also not. Like usually, it's more obvious on the heads on the on the tail end. But I go through and I swage them all anyways because I really hate trying to prime these things and then you just end up messing up a bunch of primers and costing yourself a bunch of time later down the road, you know, so I just go through and see like that one probably didn't need it. I didn't feel any resistance swaging that pocket, but put it in there and it'll it just, you know, makes it easier for the next primer to go in. And you only have to do this once, you know. Uh, as the initial sort to the brass. Holy smokes, that one's a bit tight. Um, but, you know, you get the gist going through and just pressing all these. Oh yeah, this one automatically does it, but I can't get it to do that reliably, really. So I just stopped to push it up in there. And yeah, guys, so I'm going through it here. I found a, I found a good example of what uh, staked primer or uh, crimped primer is. Oh, you can see those four those four stakes in there. That'd, that'd ruin a primer, you know, trying to get it in there. That's what this guy's for, so you run it through there if you've never seen one of these work before, but you can see it doesn't take like the crimps out, but you can see how it rounded out that primer pocket. So now you could actually put another primer back in there without ruining anything. Anyways, not even halfway through the batch that I've done, but I'll be back in a little. All right, guys, finally got done swaging. Um, some of the pockets you don't have to swage, but finally got done swaging. Holy crap, that took a while. I decided to do a whole lot of, a whole lot of brass this go around, so. I'll go ahead and move this guy off to the side here. I did fail to mention in the previous uh, what you're gonna need section here. Um, not that you need it, but boy howdy, you're really gonna want it. Cause the next thing that we're gonna do uh, is not that, but we're gonna start cutting all of the uh, all the brass down to length. And it leaves a pretty nasty, here I got, I got an example right here, and it leaves a pretty nasty little burr around the ring. Um, it's not too bad, but you definitely don't wanna just be shoving that up in your dies. Or at least I don't, that's just my personal preference there you guys do whatever you want to do I just think you know avoid scratching and and uh, depositing brass into the dies and unwanted places is for the best so I do go through after I cut them all I do go through and deburr them uh, inside and outside just you know you just touch them it's not it's nothing crazy but uh, so I'll get you guys set up over here and show you the show you the chop saw <clears throat> Okay, so I got my Herber Freight chop saw there. Um, I got a little spot. I put all the brass here. How this guy works is, is you feed a piece of brass into the. You got to adjust. So mine's already adjusted. And I'm not going to unadjust it because I'm already there. But you know you can you can slide this guy in and out, and you're going to want to do it. Uh, so that you're cutting your brass. I cut my brass. I think it's the Sammy spec of 300 blackout the length Oh, yeah, one 1 1.368 so 1.368 is the Sammy spec, uh, you know maximum length of The of the case before you got to trim it of course You can go a little bit below that and give it 
Um, and I go, and I go, uh, I try and keep it pretty far below that. I guess this one came out a little longer than I'd like it to. But because we're going to reshape it, they're going to grow again anyway. So you can cut them just a smidge short from the Sammy spec because they're going to grow once you size them. But, you know, again, splitting hairs here. You just want you want to get it in a in a nice safe ballpark there. But anyways, this operation uh, is a little dangerous because this guy chooches and I mean zips through brass. It's pretty incredible. But uh, I did modify my cha uh, my this saw just a little bit. Um, don't do what I do. I'm not responsible for y you hurting yourself if you do this but there is a little safety thing that you got to push in here to uh, get the saw to close you know past the you know it'll stop like right there um i have misplaced that part <laughs> and in place of it actually remove the shield in place of it i actually glued a little wood block that i made the right size to uh stop the saw from cutting through my jig because this will just cut straight through the jig so you're going to want to put something on the basin here to keep you from cutting all the way through your jig um <clears throat> that's fairly straightforward you know just a little interference fit with some super glue there so but i got it so that it cuts all the way through the case but not through my jig um nifty little jig i got it on amazon it was i don't know 15 bucks or something like that but I get my bucket in my lap here because um, this is where there's going to be a bunch of necks that you cut off and I try and like scoop them in here while while throwing the, uh, the cut cases into its own container. It gets, you know, I can get through a few and then they start falling all over the place and I got to stop and collect everything and do it. But I'll give you guys a little demo here real quick so we'll just uh, show you guys how I do it. Go ahead and start with the case in there. You're going to want to hold it against the backstop right here. You see that? Hold that against the backstop. And just like that, I mean... That little blade, don't mess around. She, she gets it. I also forgot to say, I just left... This blade is the one that comes on it stock from, uh, from Harbor Freight. This whatever's on here. I don't know... <laughs> it's it's pretty impressive honestly um, Johnny's reloading bench had a video uh, where he was doing the same thing that I'm showing you guys but uh, on his he had just like a cutoff wheel like a grinder wheel you know like an abrasive disc and my, my only qualm with him is is he used that abrasive disc in like a 3d printed jig for holding the for holding the blackout brass and it was really neat in concept and I liked the concept but I'm not gonna lie the the grinder wheel not the play you definitely want this thing this thing like screams through the brass and uh you know an aluminum jig so you know it doesn't flex or get hot or nothing like that but here we go You definitely don't want to stick your fingers in there when it's running. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys at the end of this box here. And, you know, you don't want to do watch me do this all day, so. All right. We got a heaping pile of cut brass over here now. Uh, I do suggest you do this somewhere where you don't mind making a mess because the brass dust gets everywhere. See there, there's all the ends, a few rejects. Somebody at the range had a chamber that I don't know what's going on there, but the bottom of these cases are all so I don't feel like getting any step cases on this go around, so I'm tossing them. I had an idea. 
going to work this way or not. Clamp down. How do you guys fix your presses to your benches? I didn't want to drill any holes in the bench. I'm scared, you know, I'm... Uh, the way that I was doing it was I was deburring and then I'd run it through the press, resize it, trim it, and then deburr it again. And I'm seeing if we can kill a couple of birds with multiple stones here in a different way. So what I'm going to try and do, because this is all the cut brass, I'm going to try and figure out what length I can trim the cut brass to, deburr it, then size it and just be done, you know, and then prime it or whatever and just be done with that piece of brass for the for the moment. So what about a quick grip on this guy? Because so what I got going on here is is I actually am gonna change my I'm changing my method from this day on. Um, because before this is our cut brass, you know, we just got it done with the little zippy guy there. And what I was doing before is I was deburring it, and then I'd resize it, and then I'd trim it, and then deburr it again, which is, you know, one extra step. I think I'm saving myself one step here, so what I'm going to actually do now, instead of deburring it all that, I'm going to trim it to a uh, length that I have right here, which I have set to, um, to give me cases at 1.350. Uh, as the overall length and then I'll deburr it here and then I'll size it and it spits out um, Or it should you know usually spit out 1.360 so you know a growth of ten thousandths on the case, but still well under the 1.68 Sammy maximum and also I do want a little bit of variable in there because this is all different brass I'm not sure how much uh, the different head stamps are going to grow or not, so this is, I'm feeling a pretty safe bet because I'd rather be a little short than a little long and have to go through and trim all the brass again. So that's what I got going on here. It sucks too because I just had this revelation and I already deburred all of these, so I'm going to go ahead and start by getting this uh, tub. I need another tub. You can never have too many tubs reloading. Gold pan. You guys ever pan gold? Look, I pan gold all the time. Sometimes. Silver. <laughs> oh, that was that was fucking bad. Should be throwing all the completed cases into the uh, into the gold pan, huh? I th I, I kind of like the theme. It makes it feel. Oh, dude, look at that. That's a good sight in the pan. <laughs> I'm gonna psych somebody out with that. All right, all right. I'm done goofing around, but I'll show you guys what I'm what I what I do here. So, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll go ahead and use a non-trimmed piece of brass. So here's a non-trim piece of brass. I'm gonna go ahead and set it in there. Trim it up. Deburr it. Lube up the case a little bit here. And then I'm going to size it. Oh, you know what? Just because I can. Look at this. We're saving steps all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and get out my primers. Because why not? Here, in our prime arm, Let's prime these sons of bitches. God, that little, that my 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 priming arm has got a little nub on it. It's brand new. I just got it. It's got a little nub on it. it looks like a primer hit. Anyways, so I'm gonna fix that real quick, and then I'll be back and I'll show you what I get. What you know, if I can get this process quick. Okay, I think I got the primer. Issue, or primer cedar issue solved there, so we're just going to go ahead and crank through a few. And just 
just a little bit of moon. Excuse me. That was the greatest disappearing act of all time. Uh oh. Oh, ten cents! <clears throat> Definite on the first prime. There it goes. Yeah, there's still a little mark, but it's not it's not so bad. Alright, but there we have it. That is a ready to load piece of 300 blackout brass I'm just gonna do these one piece at a time it's a good Johnny Cash song and uh... yeah so I think this is a probably a pretty good spot to end the video um, I'm going to make another video uh, where I'm loading 300 blackout uh, for subsonic, what I do for my subsonic loads. Um, in the f yeah, That should be coming out shortly after I get all these done. I think I'm just going to start working on that. But as far as converting 556 to 556223 to 300 blackout brass, you know, here you go. Um, I think I might have forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video for something that you're going to need. Um, you probably, uh, actually I guess it would only work with this style where you can set the trim depth or, you know, have a, have a, have a style where you can set the trim, trim depth for the cases, uh, otherwise, yeah, you could just trim it with like an easy trim or, you know, whatever you got, I'm sure most people have something like what I have here, if you don't, I don't think it was too bad to get into. And the easy trim, I'm sure, would be way, probably faster in a lot of ways. But, you know, I'm just working with what I got here. Anyways, you guys enjoyed the video, uh, found it helpful, all that jazz. Go ahead, leave a like, drop a comment. Uh, subscribe if you so desire. It's totally your choice, I don't really care what you do. Um, if I did something wrong, if I did something stupid here, go ahead and let me know in the comments or whatever, you know. Or any tips and tricks that you might have to share with somebody else who wants to, you know, get into reloading after all. It would be nice to have more people in the community, always is. But, uh, other than that, yeah. Remember your three R's. Reduce, reuse, reload. Alright, peace.